This week, we're answering the question, what does it take to get younger voters to the polls? It's your duty to vote. And stay tuned. At the end of the episode, we'll answer listener questions and we'll help you figure out how to make sure that your mail-in ballot is counted. American voting rates have hovered in the mid-50s for most of recent history. That is not great. If early walk-in totals are any indication, voter turnout is going to be low once again come Tuesday. When will voters understand that if they're not voting, our democracy suffers? But it's even worse with younger voters. In the 2014 midterms, less than 20% of voters under 30 cast a ballot. And it's not for lack of trying. Turn out for what? What's up, it's Lil John, and I'm turning out for the legalization of marijuana. We're at the point now where the millennials make up the largest share of the eligible voters, but they're not making up the largest share of the voters. <laughs> Our guest, Michael McDonald, studies voter turnout at the University of Florida, where he's been tallying election participation for decades. Yeah, younger voters, if they would just show up to vote, they, they would change our politics. Uh, but they don't. So what can be done to attract the elusive young voter? Well, many have tried. Have a voice in your future. Vote. Remember to smack down your vote. Rock the election in November. Don't just sit there. Let's get to it. Speak your mind. There's nothing to it. Vote. The the thing was about those rock the vote campaigns is they were largely mass based. They were um, uh, more celebrity oriented. We will vote, 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 vote. They were more um, advertising oriented. And, you know, to their credit, what Rock the Vote did was they realized that mass based advertising has its place, but it's really that retail face-to-face or networking, people talk to other people and they talk to a trusted source or even better yet, a friend talking to a friend or a family member talking to a family member. Those are the the strongest messages that can drive higher turnout. First-time voters show up 18% of the time in midterm elections. Not anymore. Hey, David, thanks so much for joining us today. Of course, thanks for having me on, Molly. To figure out how to get Zoomers to vote, we spoke with bona fide youth David Hogg. 96 people die every day from guns in our country, yet most representatives have no public stance on guns. And to that, we say no more. Each generation has, you know, a little bit of their own story. What's what's your sense uh, of what the impact of young voters is going to be? I, I think we could absolutely change the country. You know, we could literally completely uh, overhaul and take over the American political system. In comparison to 2014, the youth voter turnout in 2018 nearly doubled from that. As a result of that, I would argue that we weren't the only reason, but we are a major reason why we got a significantly younger Congress that is more representative of young people. We got a Congress that has people like AOC and Ilhan Omar, many uh, amazing candidates at the state and local level. What are some of the issues that that you're hearing that that turned out, you know, young people in 2018, like you talked about? And what are you hearing this year? I I think there's a lot of us that just don't think that we're going to be better off than our parents at this point. Kids are really tired and traumatized. They've seen school shootings on TV every day. You have black and brown communities, especially that are disproportionately affected by gun violence. And we've seen how our planet is melting in front of our eyes. Yeah, we just, we literally see our future going up in flames in front of us. This award and every single award given out tonight were voted on by the people. And you know what else is voted on by the people? Is the midterm elections on November 6th. Get out and vote. I love you guys really at that core of political power and political change is cultural change. And that's why I think when we see cultural change like we've seen over the summer around the issues of racial justice, politicians start to get really scared and start to do something because they realize that culture is shifting faster than politics. When that happens, things actually tend to change. What we're looking at right now, I think, for the 2020 general election is a turnout rate 
that could be as high as 65 percent. You'd have to go all the way back to 1908 to see a turnout rate as high as 65 percent. So here we are over a month away from the election and we've already had over a million people vote. Um, that's incredible. I expect we'll start seeing that states will have already passed their 2016 turnout in just the early vote. And there would still be votes that have to be cast on election day because there are going to be a lot of people voting on election day too. I asked David what advice he has for young people who want to get engaged and increase voter turnout in their communities. If there's anything that anyone does from this, uh or here's this is one, make sure that you vote if you have the privilege of doing so, because right now it is not a right that everybody gets to have in the United States, which I fundamentally disagree with. But two, make sure that, you know, get another friend and make a plan to vote to ensure that you are going to actually vote. So young voters have the numbers to really affect the results of elections. And the current generation of young voters is more engaged than ever before. And it makes sense. It's their future and they know it. When people try to suppress your vote and there are people who stand against you because you are too young, we say no more. A guide to mail-in ballots. First, it's important to remember that laws and requirements for voting by mail are different from state to state. So how you fill out your ballot and what you need to do could be very different from a friend or relative voting in another state. So wherever you are, make sure you read the instructions for your state carefully. Here's some points to look out for. Writing utensil. Many states require that you use blue or black pen to fill out your ballot. Make sure to sign your ballot envelope in every place that asks for the voter's signature. Now, some states have their own additional requirements for absentee ballots. This could be requiring ballots to be returned in multiple envelopes like Pennsylvania, or it could be requiring a witness to sign your ballot envelope. For returning your ballot, check out the options in your state. This could be a drop-off box or returning it to a local election official, or you can always return it through the mail. Just make sure that you know the deadline to return the ballot in your state. If you're mailing your ballot, don't forget to check if your state requires postage. And remember, vote like your rights depend on it. To find out more about the specific requirements in your state, visit aclu.org backslash voter. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to know more about how the Postal Service or the courts relate to this election, then check out our other episodes. And if you'd like to know when the next episode comes out, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.